So here in this video, we will discuss about C1, C2 tubercle spine by this case example. So this is a 14 year old male child presented with already diagnosed C1, C2 tubercle spine from MRI with complaints of dysphagia and inability to hold neck with intact neurological status. So basically complaint were of dysphagia and inability to hold neck. So this shows the MRI of the patient. So here we can see the odontoid process of the C2 vertebra. This is the anterior arch of the C1 and this is the posterior arch of the C1. And here we can see collection anteriorly in the retropharyngeal space leading to dysphagia of the patient. Now what was the mode of spread of the infection to the C1, C2 region? So spread to this region is basically secondary to the lymphatic spread from the cervical and the mediastinal lymph node. So cervical and the mediastinal lymph nodes, they are pri primarily involved leading to the spread spread of infection to the retropharyngeal space and from the retropharyngeal space the infection may reach the C1, C2 bony vertebras. So now how will the infection progress in this region? Now the progressive infection in this region will cause destruction of the odontoid process of the C2 vertebra, destruction of the C1 arches, anterior and the posterior arches and if we know the anatomy of this region we know that there are various ligaments providing stability of this region. So we have the transverse and the LR ligament in this region. So finally the, the destruction of the ligaments occurs which results in atlantoaxial C1, C2 subluxation and which will be the cause of the instability and hence it will lead to the complaint of neck pain and inability to hold neck. And finally in the later stages basilar invagination can occur because of erosion and destruction of the C1, C2 facet joint. So this is the, this is the uh, method through which the infection will present and progress in this region. But it should be noted that as we know that spinal canal diameter is more in this region about 13 mm. So the neurological deterioration occur later and there is less chance of the neurological involvement. Now coming upon to the x-ray findings, so on the lateral x-ray which we will see a increased pre-vertebral soft tissue space at the level of C2 because of the abscess collection. In the open mouth view we will look for the erosion and destruction of the odontoid process of the C2. On dynamic x-rays, flexion extension x-rays, we will look for the instability at the atlanto axial level. Now how to detect the instability? There is a atlanto dense interval which is more than 3 mm. So this is on the lateral view. So we will discuss it here. So on the lateral view we will see for the prevertebral soft tissue shadow and the atlanto dense. So this is the anterior arch of the C1 and here we have the C2. So the distance between the anterior arch of the C1 and the dense which is the odontoid process is known as atlanto dense interval. Normally it is less than 3 mm but in these cases where there is destruction in this region this diameter is this length is more than 3 mm. This interval is more than 3 mm. Now this is the CT scan showing the destruction of the odontoid process here and also destruction of the lateral mass of the C1 vertebra. Now why was there complaint of retropharyngeal abscess? Because the TB as we know that it is an anterior disease and the abscess is formed is anterior and hence it is collected in the retropharyngeal region. Now coming to the various classification of the C1, C2 tuberculosis. So we have the various stages. We have first is the life source stage. So in stage 1 there is minimal bony destruction or ligamentous destruction but there is no subluxation or dislocation. There is no atlantoaxial subluxation or dislocation in the stage 1. In stage 2 there is minimal bony and ligamentous destruction but there is reducible or irre irreducible atlantoaxial dislocation or subluxation. In stage 3 there is a significant amount of bony and ligamentous destruction. So in this case, we can see there is significant amount of bony and ligamentous destruction. So this case will come in the stage 3 of the life so staging. 
Now the second staging to discuss here is the Bhagavati staging. So in stage one of Bhagavati staging, there is merely inflammation of the bony structure of the cervical uh, craniovertebral junction. So we have the C1 vertebra here and superior to that we have the occiput or the cranium. So this comes out to be craniovertebral junction. So there is inflammation in the stage one of the bony structure of the craniovertebral junction with granulation tissue formation and the bony destruction. In stage two, there is formation of large abscess with bony changes. So there is, there was initially there was just inflammation changes with or without bony destruction. Now we have in the second stage is the large retropharyngeal abscess. In stage 3, we have associated subluxation of the atlantoaxial joint. And in stage 4, there is a epidural abscess. The abscess or collection has entered into the vertebral canal and causes compression of the cervicovertebral junction with neurological deficit. So this case which we are discussing, it has a subluxation of the atlantoaxial joint. As we have seen that ADI is more than 3 mm. So this case will come in the stage 3 of the Bhagavati classification. And also as this case doesn't have any neurological deficit, so this case is not a stage in the stage 4 of the Bhagavati classification. Now coming about to the treatment protocol of the C1-C2 tuberculous spine. Now what are the indication of the surgery? So if there is progressive neurological deterioration, if there is no improvement in the neurology that initially the patient has mild neurological deficit, and there is still no improvement on ATT after 6 weeks of ATT. Third is the sudden or rapid deterioration of the neurological status. And fourth is the demonstrable clinical or radiological instability causing severe neck pain. So three indications are basically because of neurological involvement. And one indication is because of the instability in this region. So these were the indication of the surgery in the C1-C2 tuberculosis. Now we will discuss the various scenario and how to approach in each scenario. Suppose the patient present to us with neck pain without instability and with mild or non-neurological deficit. So in those cases we will proceed with short cervical or the Philadelphia collar with ATT. In the second scenario, the patient may present with neck pain with inability to hold head but there is no significant vertebral destruction and no instability or neurological deficit. So only complaint here is the neck pain and inability to hold it. But on X-ray, CT, MRI, there is no neurological involvement and there is no demonstrable instability. In those cases, we can go for a short course of the cervical traction and followed by the somi brace or the halo vest application. If there is associated large retropharyngeal abscess causing dysphagia and respiratory dis dis difficulty, we will go for the aspiration or drainage of the abscess. So fourth scenario we have is the significant vertebral destruction with reducible atlantoaxial dislocation but no neurological deficit. So in these cases we can keep the patient in traction to reduce the atlantoaxial dislocation followed by fixation with immobilization with the halo vest application. Now if the patient is having, now here we can see there is no neurological deficit. Now we will discuss all the scenarios and in all these scenarios we haven't uh, got surgery. So here we have the reducible atlantoaxial dislocation with the neurological deficit. So here we need to proceed with the surgery. So we will go for the posterior instrumentation and C1, C2 fusion. Now if the patient is having irreducible lentoaxial dislocation with neurological deficit, again we will go for decompression with posterior instrumentation and C1, C2 fusion. If there is destruction of the C1, C2 lateral mass with basilar invagination, with more proximal inv invagination, so we will go for the cervical medullary decompression. So these were all the scenarios in which the patient might present to us and how we will proceed with the patient. So in this case, 
we, as we have discussed that there was dysphagia so retropharyngeal abscess it was aspirated by a transoral approach and there was atlantoaxial dislocation or subluxation which was reduced by traction application and finally definitive fixation was done by haloorthosis but not to forget that att chemotherapy is more important because at the end of the day it is still a tuberculosis disease so that was all in the c1 c2 tuberculosis